Okay, so if you could just explain um, just what you do for a living, essentially. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a lecturer in nutrition. I've been at Robert Gordon University for three years, but before that, I was at the University of Dundee for 18 years. And then I did a short spell at the University of Aberdeen as a research fellow looking at the public health nutrition aspects of obesity. Um, but I'm back in lecturing now, so I really teach um, nutrition in terms of food composition, um, sensory evaluation of food, public health nutrition. Um, and my real interest is in how you get people to change their behaviour so they become more healthy. Okay, uh, so my second question. Um, what involvement have you had personally with the growth of your own produce? Right, okay. Um, I've had a garden, I suppose, for, well, ever since we've been, I've been married, which is over 35 years, and various um, trials at, at growing my own food. And the most recent one, we moved into a house a year ago Lovely big garden, starting off from scratch, and um, I've now got a greenhouse. <laughs> and this year I have tried to grow runner beans, cabbages, courgettes, um, tomatoes, cucumber, lettuce leaves. I wouldn't say I've been fantastically successful, but I have yeah. had some red tomatoes and a few beans. And uh, beans haven't been as good as they have in previous years in other houses. But the house we had in Dundee, I was quite good at growing courgettes and green beans and tatties. And, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I'm, a, I'm a, still a very much an amateur. I yeah. wouldn't say that I... But I'm very keen to grow my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I feel that if I've got the ground, then I sh that's what I should be doing. I should be using it to... to so, that, yeah, that kind of you know links into my, set, my next question, which is kind of the main reasons generally why you do mm -hmm. it. Is it, you know, that obviously the, the health benefits. That, that links to my next one, which is in more detail, which is... You know, from a nutritionist point of view, yeah. okay. the benefits of growing your own food right. over buying from the shop, is shop. there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the one of the things that drives me towards wanting to grow own food is I feel if you've got the ground to do it, I should use it. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose because I'm a nutritionist, I'm very keen to eat lots of fruit and veg. And I like being able to just go out and pick my own vegetables. Um, I've only just started growing fruit. We've got a few raspberries, but we've, I've just ordered 12, 12 fruit trees mm -hmm. to plant. So okay. I'm looking forward to having those. Haven't had much success with fruit before, but that's uh, good. Um, can, you, can you repeat that question again? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what? Could you please explain from a nutritionist's point of view the benefits of growing your own food? I don't know whether from a nutritional point of view it's any better eating your own than eating what's from mm -hmm. the supermarkets. Yeah. I suppose... Yeah, well, one, one, um, one good thing would be that if you pick the food and eat it immediately, then mm -hmm. the um, nutrients like vitamin C and folic acid are likely to be higher because okay. they tend to degrade with time mm -hmm. um, and storage. So from that point of view, that's, you know, that's good. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Lots of people would say they like to grow their own food because they know then that it's organic and it hasn't been sprayed with anything or have you. I, that issue doesn't really worry me too much. Right. Um, well, that, answer, but, that answers yeah. my next question. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, your view on pesticides essentially. So you. I I would prefer not to use them, but if okay. I had to use them, I would do. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I must admit, when I buy stuff from the supermarket, I wash it quite carefully, and that isn't because I want to get rid of the you know any dirt, because I think the supermarkets are pretty clean as far as that's concerned. It's the pesticides that I'm more concerned about. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I've done quite a lot of research into this, so it's the vegetables, they go through a process of filtering mm -hmm. in, in store, because obviously, you know, a customer wants a specific product. For example, a carrot has to be a sort of average length and a yes. shape. Yes, yes. Um, so it goes through a, a filtering process, which obviously involves a lot of waste, which, yes. you know, in, in my opinion, is wrong, because mm -hmm. um, I don't really, I'm not offended by a carrot that's 
No, but exactly. shorter, sort of thing. Um, but anyway, um, I mean, having said that, I actually what I what I tend to do because I now live. I used to live in the centre of Aberdeen, um, and before that in the centre of Dundee, but I now live um, in a country town, mm -hmm. and um, where you can buy local produce in the shops. Yeah. we've got two or three farms within a mile mm -hmm. that we can just go and buy potatoes, buy carrots. So I don't. I mean, I grew new potatoes this year, but I wouldn't grow. Um, ordinary main crop potatoes because they're so cheap. Yeah. To just buy them from the farm rather than trying to do them myself. Because mm -hmm. I find well, I do a bit, a bit of growing myself um, back at home. That's in you know a sort of rural setting. Yeah. But coming into the you know urban environment is difficult because of space issues. Yes. But you know, this is the next question: is do you think changing people's perceptions about growing their own food? Is important an important step, sorry, towards getting more people to grow their own vegetables. Yes, I think I think growing is probably a bit like cooking. I mean, it's something that we've got away from because yeah. the cooking. Um, not very many people now have got the skills to actually prepare food from scratch. Yeah. Um, and in, you know, previous um, research that I've done is is on actually promoting cooking skills in um, individuals who live in low income areas. And it was amazing what you know we found that people just haven't got a clue what to do with the cauliflower and you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, and they were thrilled when they actually found out, and they were thrilled when they actually made a dish and realised that they'd done it all themselves. And I think you can probably get the same satisfaction when you when you grow stuff. Yeah, um, rewarding. I mean, I certainly get a satisfaction from bringing something in from the garden and thinking that was grown in my garden. Yeah, that, yeah, that's my favourite part. And my husband doesn't quite see it that way because he, I think he, he looks at it as far as pound signs are concerned and he knows how much it costs to have bought that in Tesco's, whereas we've had to buy a greenhouse and, um, yeah. you know, spend a lot of time digging ground and, and, and what have you. Well, yeah. <laughs> next, <laughs> next question, <laughs> funnily see. enough, regarding cost. Yes. <laughs> Do you believe growing your own food is a, a cheaper option than buying it in the store? Now, Obviously, from what you said, that a greenhouse costs this yes. this amount, and then you know, is the difference maybe is a small amount, but over a longer term. I think over a long time, a long term, it will be good. It certainly hasn't been cost effective this year. Yeah. Um, I'm it, not actually convinced it's been cost effective growing stuff without the greenhouse because you the started. Been you got similar. the greenhouse this year. Yes. Oh, yeah. So they're a big yeah. overhead. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it is the first time that I have ever managed to get red tomatoes. Um, mm -hmm. Because in the past I used to put them in one of these little um, oh, little hot houses, yes. little tiny growing things about, mm -hmm. you know, so big. Actually, I don't want, can't, you'll know what I mean by I so do, big. Yeah. Um, and I've never really managed them to get any green ones. So, um, so this year has been good from that point of view, having a proper greenhouse. And growing cucumbers, I managed to grow four that's, cucumbers. That's good, yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so, uh, yeah, cost, I think in the long run, probably will be... Would be would you know. be cost effective, and once I um, get better at it, because mm -hmm. although I've been tinkering with it for years, I'm still not really particularly good. I think I probably used to do the courgettes that I used to grow in good summers. Yeah, were definitely cheaper than buying in the shops and green beans. Yeah, used to get great big crops of green beans and courgettes. So. I love that feeling. Yes, yeah. but this mm. year no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's funny how it's. <laughs> we're on this sort of pattern. Uh, so, do you find they get a reliable output from you know, the growth of your own vegetables? No, not at no. the moment. No. Not at the moment, until no. you get kind of bedded in. Yes. And kind of, yeah, and um, final question. Um, so, if obviously you've got a bit of experience, if you had any advice for a first time grower, what would it be? Oh dear. Um, from trial and error, I would imagine. Yes, probably. Um, I mean, I'm a bit naughty in that I don't follow the books I just sort of go on instinct as to what to do yeah. I do the same with cooking I, I mean I do follow recipes but I, I do. don't stick to them um, so passion involved yes um, probably start off small and don't it's probably not worth trying to grow things that if you can obtain them cheaply mm -hmm. nearby except that I think probably the cost of supermarket food is we, do, we don't actually pay for the real cost of it. 
and yeah. of course the environmental cost and the mm -hmm. um, you know whether whether the food, cheap food that we get at the moment is going to be sustainable is um, is really s mm. sustainable is, is questionable. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's all my questions. Oh right. Okay. okay. So it wasn't as long as I thought you'd, no, you'd no, imagine. No. I thought you were going to ask about research findings on the benefits of gardens and things like that. Well, I mean, yeah, but well, if you'd like to explain some further points, that would be fine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just been sent to me. I mean, she bought it, Gardner. No, there's, there's been quite a lot of... Um, there's, there's a lot in the literature, or a lot of people are saying in the literature that community gardening has... Effect, or gardening in general has good effects on physical activity, fruit and vegetable consumption, mental health, but I'm not convinced they've actually been proven. Right. Uh, which is why I want to do some of my own research into that. So uh, this report that I've just been sent, I think is nearly all qualitative work. So it's asking people how they feel, which is, which is valid, um, but um, it would be nice to see some numerical yeah. quantitative data on mm -hmm. the, you know, whether, whether people who are involved in gardening in the community or actually involved in, in perhaps just growing their own food for themselves... Um, really have a better fruit and vegetable intake, better mental health, more physical activity than people who don't. And of course there's all sorts of conflicting factors because you find that um, it's a certain type of people who will garden. I mean, you wouldn't find yeah. somebody who is that's yeah. lots of that's true, problems yeah. likely to grow their own food. Unless they, well, that's, that's not entirely true because um, I think gardening has been used to uh, help people with mental health problems. Yeah, that's so, what was, yeah. Because so yeah, I went down to the allotments, went to the community gardening. That was my first step. Mm. Going down to speak to people, and I've got obviously I've got an opportunity in, to go around and you know get yeah. some primary experience, get stuck in essentially. And uh, yes, definitely there's the, the mindset yeah. of the person, and I just kind of yeah, they fit a certain demographic, and I just think yeah, yeah. yeah. they say it's easy and stuff like that. But yeah, that's essentially it's going to be the. Obviously, product design. I'm going to be eventually designing a product, but I want to changing perceptions is important as well. So tying it into some sort of yes. campaign. Yeah, you know about the Morrison's um, Grow Your Own. Is it Grow Your Own? What's it? The, they, they've got this um, Morrison supermarket. They've given out give out vouchers mm -hmm. to um, customers, which can be given to schools to buy um, gardening equipment. Right. And there's also a land share as well. That's another yeah. interesting thing. Because yeah. It's oh, that's where people give a bit of their garden to somebody else to. That's yeah. in, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 There's lots of. It's just a route. I'm kind of at the the stage where I'm in quite a general mm. area. I'm yeah. doing lots of research in different areas, and then I'm going to. You're doing. I thought it was quite interesting that Tesco's this year. Um, seems to be. Well, they were selling in the springtime mm -hmm. lots of these um, little pots that you could start to grow your own tomatoes and start to grow your own parsley and what have you. Yeah. So it's not, I mean, up to now, I think they've just done the parsley growing in pots and things like that, which seems to die after mm -hmm. it gets got built in senility. Um, but they do seem to be by, you know, encouraging people to grow their own by producing these ready, these sort of starter kits. Yeah. Which I find quite interesting from a you know, supermarket that take them as far as possible um, without kind of actually doing it, yes. doing it for them. Sort of yeah. Thing. But, I just yeah. wonder whether it's just in reaction to the recession. Um, mm -hmm. I yeah, think well, they realise that people want to perhaps grow their own.